Hello, everyone. Okay, so you're doing your first topic in the A2 course, and that is lattice energy. Now, as I do these lessons, I basically want to try to keep them as close to normal lessons as possible. So I'll just teach like I would be teaching in the classroom, and you will take notes like you would be taking in the classroom. And then I'll give out tasks and expect you to do them. I'm not necessarily going to be checking up whether you're doing them or not, because at the end of the day, this is just a pre-A2 level course, really. Everything will eventually be repeated next year anyway. But what we're trying to do is get a head start and make sure that um, you've just got a load of knowledge before starting next year's course. OK, so lattice energy. This is similar to um, a topic that we've done in the past when we did enthalpy stuff with exothermic and endothermic reactions, and we looked at um, Hess's law. This is a very, very similar topic in many ways, okay? So it might be good to go and check over that topic. Um, in the textbook, that would have been chapter six, enthalpy changes, okay? And if you remember rightly, we did a fair few calculations in that topic where you'd have to um, work out the enthalpy of reaction of a certain reaction using values given in the data book or or given in the question itself okay so this is one of those topics where the data book is also going to be required okay to kick off this is all about lattices now you should that a lattice is a repeated pattern and we're going to be talking about ionic compounds here okay so let's just remind ourselves of ionic bonding. So your starter task is to show how magnesium and oxygen will bond to form magnesium oxide and lithium and oxygen will bond to form lithium oxide. And you've got to do this in the way that we learn how to show ionic bonds back when we did it um, a good few months ago now. OK, so pause the video and try to do that in your notebook or on your piece of paper or whatever. OK, then unpause the video and I'll go through it with you. Right, so magnesium is in group two. Therefore, it in its outer shell in its normal state, okay? But then what it does when it forms an ion, it loses those two electrons. So you're actually going to have an empty outer shell, okay? So I've drawn this shell here. I'll just write Mg in the middle there because it's got an empty outer shell. And it's transferred those electrons to the oxygen, hasn't it? Okay, so... It's going to have lost two electrons, hence why it has that empty outer shell. So it's going to be looking something like that. We've got magnesium, no electrons there, but the two plus charge indicates that it's transferred two electrons to the oxygen. So then we're going to draw the oxygen. Again, we're going to need parentheses. There's oxygen. I'll put O in the middle. You're going to have to excuse my um, drawing raw skills here because I'm having to do it all with a mouse. It's a bit tricky. I don't have a touch screen. Okay, so let's start putting in electrons. Oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then it's got two more electrons now and it's received those electrons from the magnesium. So I'll just plonk those in there. One, two. And in receiving those extra electrons, it's got a two minus charge overall. Okay. So the Ionic lattice for magnesium will be in a one-to-one -one ratio like we're showing here. And that's because the charges are balanced. Magnesium forms a two plus charge. Oxygen forms a two minus charge. OK, and then you will have these two things sticking together with those strong forces of ele electrostatic attraction throughout the lattice itself. OK, I'll just quickly copy in uh, what the lattice structure for magnesium oxide lo looks like. All right, so I've copied in a, an image from Google. So you've got your repeated. And then Again, it's on ratio, isn't it? Because your ions are balanced. So that's nice and easy to understand. Um, just as a side note, it's important to know what magnesium oxide looks like. You should know that now anyway, really. Um, so we'll get an image up. There we go. So quick Google of magnesium oxide. You'll see that it's a powder like this. OK, so it's a white powder. So make a note of that as well. OK, so your second one that you needed to do was for lithium and oxygen. So that's going to be slightly different. OK, because lithium is in group one. Magnesium was in group two, lithium is in group one. That means you are going to, again, form an empty outer shell. Like so, but this time it's just going to be a one plus charge because it's only transferred one electron. OK, but in this case, we've got oxygen is going to be I, pretty much identical, isn't it? OK, so here's oxygen. 
and it's getting the electrons one two three four five six there's our six electrons now this lithium here has lost one electron so it's given one electron or transferred one electron to the oxygen but we've got a problem here because the oxygen is not yet full it's outer shell isn't full so that means that well what's missing the fact is you've got you need another lithium don't you because it's a two to one ratio of the ions here. We know that the compound overall must be balanced, otherwise it's gonna do all sorts and start uh, attaching to other things. So you're gonna need two of these lithium ions for every one oxygen, okay? So I'll just uh, put another electron here that's come from the other lithium, and I've just put it in a different color as well to indicate that those two electrons are obviously not from the same lithium atom, they're from two different ones, okay? So we've got two to one ratio there. Now that means that we're going to have a lattice structure that looks a little bit different, so let's quickly go and find that. Uh, to be honest, it's going to be a bit difficult to draw, but um, the, the main point of the story is that the lattice structure is going to have a ratio of two lithium ions for every oxygen ion. Okay, you're never going to be asked to draw it anyway. Okay, again, lithium oxide is a white powder. I think it's a little bit more grey than magnesium oxide, but white powder is fine. Okay, so that's just a little recap on how we'd actually represent uh, ionic and ionic bond forming. Okay, now you've probably noticed, or I've just noticed that I've missed out the two minus ion here. So that kind of gets us onto what is a general point of this topic. We're studying lattice enthalpy because it um, gives us values basically for the strength of the forces that hold ions together in an ionic solid in a crystalline lattice. And um, basically, the greatest, the greater the lattice enthalpy, the stronger the forces. Now you will see lattice energy and lattice. Sorry, it should be enthalpy here. Whoops. But. Um, what you need to know is that uh, essentially for for your purposes, these two terms are exactly the same thing. OK, so if you see a question talking about lattice energy or lattice enthalpy, they're talking about the same thing. There is actually a slight difference between the two things, but it's actually a it's a minute difference in terms of the actual value. So please don't worry about it. OK. And what's the point in uh, knowing about any of this? Well, if you get an understanding of lattice enthalpy, also some other values, including enthalpy of atomization, electron affinity, you're gonna be able to calculate the strength of the bonding, which is then gonna give you further information about things like solubility and um, the properties when it comes to thermal decomposition, etc. Okay, so just to very quickly recap, we're looking at lattice energy or lattice enthalpy which is basically talking about the strength of the bonds holding a crystalline lattice together okay you'll learn some other things like enthalpy of atomization etc and that is going to allow you to actually find out to deduce a value for lattice energy which will then allow you to understand and compare different ionic compounds in terms of their properties okay so that's really what the topic's all about I suggest you copy down this general idea. Okay, so pause your video and make sure you've got that copied down. Make sure you realize that you see these two, um, these two terms are basically interchangeable. And then we'll move on to the nitty gritty. Okay, just in case uh, we do end up confusing ourselves, it's very, very, very quickly, let's just go through the idea of energy diagrams or enthalpy diagrams. Very, very quickly, you've seen this kind of diagram many times to describe exothermic reactions, and you've seen this type of diagram to, to describe endothermic reaction. Okay, remember this hump in the middle is, is basically representing the activation energy, activation energy. So if you're, if you're just talking about a change that's happening, okay, ignoring what's happening in the intermediate of the change, okay, then you just get rid of that hump there, don't you? And you could say that if you had a diagram that looks something like this, let me, this is going to be a mess, but hopefully, oh gosh, that's terrible. Okay, anyway, yeah, so if you've got a process taking place and the overall change is this amount, okay, you've got energy of the stuff going into the process, I'm not even going to call it reaction, up here and you've got the energy of the stuff going out of the process down here okay you should just be totally aware by now that because of this difference here okay then this is going to be a negative delta h okay 
and it's going to be exothermic. And also a very important thing to be aware of is think of it in terms of stability as well. Okay, so cause your stuff coming out, whoops, stuff coming out of the process here has got a lower overall energy. In other words, if I extrapolate this line I'm looking at now, that I've got the cursor on. If I take that to here, okay, that's value X, let's say. And then if we look at this line here, that's value Y. You can say that Y, so the stuff going into this process, is, is of much higher energy, okay? And that means that's much less stable. Y is much less stable than X here, okay? Because X in the stuff that's been formed has much lower energy, and you can think of that as having much less potential energy in the bonds, okay? So a couple of important things. If you've got an exothermic process going on, then the stuff coming out of the process is going to be more stable, and remember, heat will be released. And of course, then it's going to be opposite for endothermic. So let's quickly do a, a profile for endothermic. Okay, same kind of thing. We've got um, a certain level of energy stuff going into this process. I'll try to do a better dotted line this time. Oh, dear. Not straight. Okay, and then we've got energy of the stuff coming out. Remember on this um, axis here, on the y-axis here, we're talking about enthalpy or energy. So, again, if we call this point here x and this point here y, it could be any letter, by the way. I'm just using X and Y. Um, we can see that the stuff coming out of this process is actually much less stable. It has a much greater average energy, okay, or average enthalpy, which means it's much less stable. The stuff going into the reaction is much more stable. And again, what's had to happen here is that you've had to have a, an input of energy in order to increase the energy of the um, of the stuff here and then kind of decrease its stability. Uh, that means that whatever process this is, is going to be a positive delta H, okay, delta H, and that's obviously gonna be an endothermic process, okay? And that's gonna require heat from an outside source. Sorry about the writing, I'm writing with a mouse. Okay, so hopefully that's just reminded us of the idea of exothermic being negative, also about the stability in terms of endothermic being positive value, and also about the stability when it comes to endothermic processes. Okay, so if we take that idea to this profile here, all this is showing is two different levels of energy, okay? And here is talking about the level of energy of the gaseous ions, so gaseous uh, sodium plus ions and gaseous chloride minus ions. Now, if they're gases, one thing that you really need to be aware of here is that obviously these are very far apart, okay? So you've got to assume that these ions aren't really interacting significantly, okay? I know that you know that if you have a plus and minus ion, they're going to stick together in ionic bond, and that's what this is all about. But in this situation here that I've just circled, you've got to uh, kind of consider these ions to be scattered far apart, okay? Right, now hopefully, after what I've just said, you should realize that these are much less stable than the product here, NaCl, because they have a much higher enthalpy, okay? So if we were going to turn this here, so this stuff into sodium chloride solid, you'd be taking this in this direction, okay? And because the product, okay, or the end result here has a much, um, is much lower in enthalpy, is much more stable, then you should realize this is a negative um, process, an exothermic process or negative enthalpy change. Now, if you're going to do it the other way, if you're going to take sodium chloride and turn it the other way and try to basically disperse it into its separate ions in the gaseous state, then that's going to be a positive value. I better erase the negative, just in case that confuses you. That's going to be a positive value, and that makes sense, doesn't it? That's going to be a positive delta H, because your end result is going to be of much higher enthalpy, much less stable, okay? and it's going to have to have had some energy input. Okay, and that's, I've only just explained that because we need to come up with definitions that will work for us when it comes to um, lattice enthalpy, okay? So you want to write a title, uh, lattice energy, 
and we're just going to call it lattice energy, not enthalpy, although I'll be using both terms. So lattice energy, and really I've put two definitions in here, but we're just going to choose to use one. I'll just read them out. The enthalpy change when one mole of ionic compound is broken up to form its scattered gaseous ions. OK, if we think of the definition in terms of this, then we're talking about this process, aren't we? OK. And what we're saying there is it takes 787 kilojoules per mole in order to do that. OK, but we could also say the exact same thing, but talk about it going the other way. So it's almost like an opposite definition for the same thing, which is a little bit difficult to understand. But it's just because we're looking at a different um, direction to the change, okay, in energy here, okay? So if we're going to take this one, the second one, the enthalpy change when one mole of an ionic compound is formed from its scattered gaseous ions, if we were going to take this as our definition, then we'd be looking at the same thing but going that way, okay? So by definition, if we took this as our definition, then it would always be a positive value. OK, however, if we took this definition, the second definition surrounded in blue here, it would always be a negative value. But the value would be the same. It's always going to be 787 kilojoules per mole. But depending on which way you define it, it will either be a negative delta value, delta H value or a positive delta H value if you think of it the other way. OK, so first of all, we need to clear up which definition we're going to use and just stick to it. Right. So I'll erase all that. We will take this second definition. So our definition of lattice energy is the enthalpy change or the energy change when one mole of ionic compound is formed from its scattered gaseous, scattered gaseous ions, okay? I should be writing there under standard conditions as well. So please write in or add to this definition under standard conditions. And that means we're taking it as this way, okay? Because we're going to form the ionic compound from its scattered gaseous atoms. So from here to here. Now, hopefully you realize then that our lattice energies are going to be um, exothermic. They're going to be delta H negative. It's very important. So this is our definition. Right now, I'd, what I'd like you to do is, base, based on this definition, you can write out um, equations describing the lattice energy of magnesium oxide formation, of potassium bromide formation, and of sodium sulfide formation. I've actually taken these from your textbook, and I will be basing most of my lessons on the textbook, just trying to explain it in a little bit better, okay? And trying to teach you some tricks that might speed up some of the workings, that kind of thing, okay? Right, I'm not going to do any of these for you, but I will write out the equation for the example that's already up here. OK, so here, if you want to write the equation for the formation of sodium chloride, then it's quite simple. It's going to take me a while, so I'm just going to pause so I can write it out quicker. OK, it's a nightmare writing with this maths. But anyway, there we go. So we've got Na plus plus Cl minus forming NaCl extremely important that you have state symbols in here okay because by definition you're forming the the sodium chloride from scattered gaseous ions okay so that's really important that you have your state symbols in here now the other thing you're going to add in here is what the actual energy change is or enthalpy changes here okay so we use delta h just like we're familiar with okay and it's going to equal this value here and hopefully you'll understand why this value according to our definition is negative because we're talking about this direction aren't we okay going from there to there therefore all this energy is basically escaped as heat so we've got a value of negative seven eight seven kilojoules ah i've got to move my face hang on there we go kilojoules per mole okay Excuse the slow writing. OK, so all I want you to do very quickly, it should take you a couple of minutes, is do the same thing for one, two, three or ABC examples there. OK, I'm going to stop this video now just before it crashes and we'll continue in a second video. Bye bye.